This tutorial will cover so-called tune rendering, using V-Ray materials and then post-processing in Photoshop and Illustrator to get the desired result. We'll start off in Rhino. You can see this particular Rhino view is from my second year master's project. Now, when it comes to um, assigning materials, I prefer to assign them within the Rhino interface rather than directly assigning them through the V-Ray interface. I just find it's easy to keep track of everything and change them accordingly. Now, with the V-Ray materials themselves, you can see each of these is a different hue because they're corresponding roughly to what the materials they are um, emulating are. And they have different contour line weights, different opacities as necessary. The tune texture they're based on is bundled with V-Ray it's found in the diagrammatic section. And critically, this texture can only be rendered on the CPU. It cannot be rendered on the GPU, or at least not yet. You can see that, again, as I've mentioned earlier, different opacities and different contour widths as necessary. Now, the other critical thing is making sure that each of these textures has the can be overridden checkbox unchecked. This will allow for um, setting the foliage as an override later. These are the various different lights. I'm using dome lighting again. I'm doing that for ease, and the rest of these lights are all enabled as well to ensure that the render achieves the desired effect. Blocks, the people have been disassociated again. This allows for greater flexibility. And then critically, when you're setting layers, make sure you have material, random colors selected and enabled. Contour and back to beauty are optional. As I said, this only renders on the CPU. I've set up it as high resolution again, because my desire was for a full bleed print. You can change that to your needs. I'm exporting as a VR image. And again, material override, foliage, this allows for the um, foliage material to override all of the inbuilt um, textures for the foliage. Now, light generation is primary and secondary, set to brute and light cache. Please adjust this as necessary, because I think in my case it caused the render to take, take an inordinate amount of time. Now, we're going to post processing. This is why we export as VR image, because sometimes it comes out as horrendously overexposed and the only sane way to change it is within the VR image. Now, the other thing I'm starting to play with is the Filmic Tone Map Player. I have it set at the Habel preset and I play with it as necessary. For me, it just provides that added level of granularity and control of the image itself. This entire process of subjective, so your mileage may vary, of course. Then I export the RGB layer, and I export the alpha layer, and I export the material ID layer. I'm also expecting the contour layer here, but this the contour layer will not be used further in this tutorial. Now, once that's done, we move into Photoshop. You can see the alpha and the material ID layer enabled. Now, using material ID, use the magic wand tool to select, make sure contiguous boxes unchecked, makes life easier. Select by color, set as the particular material override as you need. And then second one as well, so as I said, opacity mask. Um, use it as the opacity mask for setting up the materials themselves. Now, once that's done, you can see that uh, these are the various different material layers I have, all with the different masks, then the backdrop image, and then the render itself. Now, the material groups themselves are using a combination of overlay and multiply to achieve the desired effect. Again, depending on the type of image you're wishing to produce, you will adjust those particular effects accordingly. The other critical thing for the sake of sanity, I set all of these as folders so I can put in the textures so they're not loose and flying about anywhere in the Photoshop file. The more complex the texturing, the more folders I use. It just makes life a hell of a lot easier. Now, with that done, these are just the blimps I've been using as drone analogies for this particular project. 
Once that's done, we move into Illustrator. Sets up a new artboard, A2 Dimensions, Portrait, sorry, Landscape, and Simac. Drag in the Photoshop file, center it, and make sure that it corresponds to the artboard dimensions. Set up three new layers. One is the color trace, second is the black white layer, and then the third is the texture layer. We'll be using image trace heavily to achieve the desired effect, and it is a very subjective process. Firstly, we start with the color trace. Set that to color and limit it at 30, path and corners to 100%, noise at one, and then we trace, and that's the preview. Next up, we go through the black white tracing. Set that, as I said, black, white, path co and corners 100%, noise 1, ignore white. The threshold is variable. Now, I'm just going to copy and create multiples of these and vary the threshold accordingly. The interesting thing here is that we will be using the lines rather than the fills. So the um, effect that you're seeing is, to an extent, going to be significantly lessened once we've achieved the desired number of layers and thresholds. Now, the reason I'm showing you this tutorial is so that you can improve upon this method, see where you feel I've gone wrong. You may discard the method entirely, you may only cherry pick bits and bobs. That's entirely fine. I do not expect anybody to be copying this by rote because, well, it didn't achieve any awards. The tutors liked it to an extent but they felt it could improve upon it. That's why I'm showing you, so you can improve upon it if this particular effect is of use to you. Now, once all the layers are done, we expand and we set line weight 2.15 as a placeholder and that automatically sets the lines to black. Now, you can go through and adjust the line weights as necessary to achieve whichever particular effect you're looking for. I usually use um, variance between 0.1 and 1 point, not millimeter, I use points. I still try and keep to the spirit of the traditional architecture line weights of 0 0.12 or 0.15, 0 0.25, 0 0.35, 0 0.5, 0 0.7 and 1. But again, your mileage varies. Once I've set up the particular line weights and I'm happy with them for now, I go back into the color trace because we're going to copy that color trace. And so, uh, as I said, iterate upon this. So here we go, the color trace. I copy it and after expanding it, then move it into the black white layer, hide everything else and then remove the fill and set the line to black. This instance, I'm setting the line weight to 0.35 and I'll be adjusting all of the other line works to 0.15 or 0.25 as necessary. For me, this provides the correct um, hierarchy of line weights for this particular image, but again, subjective. So, you'll also notice that I switched the color palette to RGB. This just helps lift the black line weights as I remembered in the original process. Now, final thing is I throw in a parchment and texture just to help lift the entire image. That's very simple. You center it and make sure you've got constraint proportions checked set it to the artboard dimensions, and then it's a simple overlay at 50% opacity. Whether you want to do the same is entirely up to you. For me, this works. And there we are, final image. We export as a PNG at 300 dpi. Make sure you have used artboard checked. I forgot to here, but make sure you have it checked. It just crops it automatically, and makes the process easier. 300 dpi, white background and this is the final image. As I said, I hope you can improve upon this method, and thank you.